Today's learning intention is calculating the discriminant to determine the nature of roots of a quadratic function. Our national five essential skills are that we need to be really good at working with integers, working with negative numbers, solving quadratic equations, and also working with inequalities. So let's get started. What's our prior knowledge? Well, if we're given the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c, then you already know that we can use the quadratic formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a to solve these types of equations, especially if we can't factorise them, then we've used the quadratic formula. Now, at higher level, this is not given in the exam. So if you're going to be able to use it, then you have to memorise it. Now let's look at what's underneath the square root. We have this term in brackets, b squared minus 4ac. And that's what we call the discriminant. And the discriminant is used to determine the nature of the roots. So here's a reminder of what I mean by the nature of roots of a quadratic function. So there are three different types of quadratic function. Type 1. Now type 1 you can see from the diagram that there are two distinct solutions. That means there are two distinct roots. There's two points where these functions cut the x-axis. The first curve has a minimum turning point and the second curve has a maximum turning point. So these have two distinct roots when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So it's a positive number. The second time, now let's look at it when b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And if I put that into quadratic formula, what does that mean? Well, that means I've got x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of 0 divided by 2a. And the square root of nothing's nothing. That gives me x equals minus b over 2a. So only one real root. What we really have is we have one repeated solution. It only cuts the x-axis at one point, but it's actually a repeated root. The turning point is going to lie right on the x-axis. So the curve, curve one is a minimum turning point and it's balancing on the x-axis. And the second one, it's a maximum turning point, but it's still only got one point on the x-axis. So in this case, we can either say the solution has one repeated root or it has two equal roots. This is when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So last one, type, is when the discriminant is negative. It's a value less than 0. So if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, when using the quadratic formula, well, there are no points where the curve intersects the x-axis at all. That's because we can't get the square root of a negative number. It doesn't exist. It can't be done. So, remember, when the discriminant is z less than zero, it's negative. That function has no real roots. It doesn't cut the x-axis at all. It's either, it's either hovering above the x-axis or it's below the x-axis. Let's try some examples. Example one. It says, state the nature of the roots of the quadratic function 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. What's the first thing we're going to do? I would like you to write out the general form of, of a quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c. We're then going to compare coefficients. That's going to give us a equals 4, b equals 12, and c equals 9. Now it's always useful to write it out like this so we don't get ourselves confused. So now I have to evaluate, calculate the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. That's going to give me b is 12, so I've got 12 squared minus, and I always put brackets in and then calculate my 4 times a times c, and that just helps me in case I get a double negative coming in somewhere. So I've got minus brackets 4 times 4 times 9. So if we do the maths, that gives me 144, take away 144. So in this case, my discriminant equals 0. Now can you remember what type of quadratic function is that? Discriminant equals 0. Well, that means I've got two equal real roots. Example 2. State the nature of the roots of the quadratic function 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Same as before, underneath I want you to write 
out the general form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we can compare coefficients. We can write down a equals 3, b equals negative 4 in this case. Now just watch out for your signs and c equals 5. Now I have my three values. We can calculate the discriminant. Discriminants b squared minus 4ac. Put your numbers in. Now that gives me minus 4 squared. Now you need to show it like this in the exam. Now I know that you know that when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. But you must sub it in correctly into the equation to get full marks in the exam. So put your brackets in and write down minus 4 squared. Minus, and then put in brackets 4 times a times c. So in this case, I've got 4 times 3 times 5. Doing the maths, that gives me 16, take away 16, 60, sorry, which is less than zero. You don't always have to actually write the number. You can just tell from that that it's going to be negative. So there's no real roots in this case. Discriminant is a number less than zero. It's negative. There's no real roots for this quadratic function. Example three. Problem solving with missing coefficients. So here we go. Find p, given that 2x squared plus 4x plus p has real roots. So they've told you something about the discriminant. Now, when you see a question that mentions the nature of roots at all, then in your head has to pop in, this is a discriminant problem. So we're going to have to use b squared minus 4ac. Example three. Problem solving with missing coefficients. So here we have a harder example. Find p given that 2x squared plus 4x plus p has real roots. So when you see a problem and it discusses the nature of the roots, then you have to pop into your head the idea that we're dealing with a discriminant here. So just solve it like a discriminant problem. So you're writing down the general form ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to compare the coefficients. And that's going to give us a equals 2, b equals 4, and c equals p. Now I have to solve this for p now. So now we're going to calculate discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Now this time we know what the nature is, we know it has real roots, and a function has real roots when the discriminant is either greater than 0 or equal to 0. So I can now put the condition down, b squared minus 4ac is greater or equal to 0. Now sub in the values for a, b and c and solve it. So that gives me 4 squared minus brackets 4 times 2 times p is greater or equal to 0. Do the maths. That leaves me with 16 minus 8p greater or equal to 0. I have to solve this. I just want p on its own. So I leave the minus 8p where it is and I get rid of the 16. So I've got minus 8p is greater or equal to minus 16. So one last step now to find what p is. So I'm dividing by minus 8, and that's going to give me p is less than or equal to 2. So you've seen that they were flipped around the inequality sign. So that's now telling me that the equation has real roots when the value p is less than or equal to 2. Now we know, just be careful to change the sign round when dividing by a negative. Let's try another example. Example 4. Problem solving with missing coefficients. So here we have to state the values of p. So there's more than one value. State the values of p for which the equation x squared minus 2px plus 2 minus p has no real roots. So now we're thinking no real roots. It's mentioned roots. It's a discriminant problem. So what's the condition for the discriminant when the function has no real roots? So having to think about it. Right, let's get started together. First step is the same. Write out the general form of the quadratic um, equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we're going to compare the coefficients. So a equals 1, b equals minus 2p. Yeah, just look carefully. It, the coefficient of x is everything before the x. It's a negative 2p. And c equals whatever's left over. Now they've put it in brackets to help you this time, but it's 2 minus p. So now we can calculate discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0 
because we've been told there is no real roots, it needs to be negative. So now sub in your values. I've got a uh, minus 2p squared. Now put this in brackets, you have to be meticulous here with your algebra or it can go wrong very quickly. So it's brackets minus 2p, all squared, minus brackets, it's 4 times 1 times and then you have the 2 minus p inside and that all has to be less than 0. Squaring the brackets then, I've got minus 2p all squared gives me 4p squared. Remember minus 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 lots of 2 minus p. Now just take it a baby step at a time. We're going to simplify that even further to 4p squared plus 4p. It's minus 4 times minus p is plus 4p. And minus 4 times 2 is minus 8. So now I've got a quadratic. Okay, I have to solve this for p. What values of p? So what do we do with quadratics when we want to solve them? We're going to factorise it then. So this time it's got a common factor of 4. So it's 4 times p squared plus p minus 2. Again, less than 0 just keeps coming down. Factorise p squared plus p minus 2 gives me 4 times p minus 1 times p plus 2. Less than 0. Now, the way, the way to solve this then is to actually just sketch it. So a quick sketch. I'm going to have the roots at x is 1 and x equals minus 2. It's just a quick sketch is all I need. I knew that was a minimum turning point because I've got a positive x squared, a positive a, sorry, the coefficient of x squared is positive. So a quick sketch just shows me roughly, I've seen where the x values are and I can see it's got a minimum turning point. Now I want to know what values of x will make that function negative. At what point does the function go below the x-axis? The y value is negative. Well that's going to be when p is a number between minus 2 and 1. So p is going to be greater than minus 2 or less than 1. That's a little bit of a tricky one. Now try these examples on your own. Please pause the video. To determine the nature of roots of a quadratic function, we need to follow the following steps. We use a discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and here's our conditions. If it equals 0, we've got two equal roots, or one repeated root, we can sometimes say. If it's greater than 0, if it's positive, we've got two distinct real roots. If it's less than 0, it's negative, it has no real roots. And when working with missing coefficients, sometimes it's good to graph a discriminant to help you.